I do something called physical chemistry. So basically what that is is the intersection of, of chemistry and physics. I look at materials and watch how they behave. Um, I became a scientist because it's really useful. It can do a lot of good. We can develop a lot of new technologies and medicines and all that. But to be honest, mostly I just think it's really cool and a lot of fun. Um, and I hope that if you come to a few of these, you'll agree with me. Okay, so I want to talk to you about MRI, or magnetic resonance imaging. Um, how many of you have heard of MRI before? It's a technique in hospitals for looking at pictures. Wow, okay. So doctors need to be able to see inside of our bodies, right, in order to tell if we are sick or if we have certain diseases or certain injuries, they need to be able to look inside to diagnose us. And it used to be that in order to look inside of you, they would have to cut you open, right? They'd have to perform surgery and actually see what was in there. Well, that's pretty dangerous, right? And not very pleasant. You don't want to get surgery if you don't have to. So we had to develop new and better techniques for looking inside of our bodies, right? So one of the first was x-rays. Who here has heard of x-rays? Okay, so a lot more of you have heard of x-rays, right? Okay, this is a picture of an x-ray right here. And this is showing you somebody's chest, right? And you can, see, you can see the bones of the chest, and you can see maybe the heart, and you can see some bones up here. But that's really, really it, right? There's not a lot of resolution. You can't see other organs. You can't see the lungs. Um, and so x-ray is only sort of of limited use. Um, another problem with x-ray, right, is that it can be dangerous. If you get too many x-rays, it can cause cancer and other problems. So we tend to use it very sparingly. Another technique we can use to look inside of us is called ultrasound. Ultrasound uses sound waves to image the inside of your body. And this is a picture of an ultrasound. Can you tell what this is? It's really hard to tell what that is, right? I don't know what that is by looking at it. It's really hard to tell because there's not a lot of contrast, right? There's not a lot of resolution. So even though this is perfectly safe, the resolution is very low, so you can't see very well what's in there, right? Not only can you not see very well, but you can also only see certain types of organs. So we need something better, and that's MRI. So this is an MRI of a person's brain. And you can see all these different layers, and it's so, so detailed, right? So this is a picture scanning through from the top to the bottom of somebody's actual brain. That's pretty cool. OK, so to, in order to understand how MRI works, because it stands for Magnetic Resonance Imaging, we need to understand how magnets work. OK, so the first thing I want you to know about a magnet is that the North Pole, so magnets have a North and a South Pole, right, just like this. And the South Pole attracts the North Pole, and the North Pole attracts the South Pole, right? So opposites attract. So if I put another magnet in, it'll spin until it lines up so that the North Pole and the South Pole are aligned, right? So how many of you have used a compass before? You guys have a few of you? Yeah, OK. So you know how a compass has a needle? And that needle always points north, right? That's because the Earth is like a giant magnet, and that needle points towards the north part of the magnetic field of the Earth. All right? By the way, magnetic field is a word that I'm going to use a bit in this lecture. Basically, you can think of the magnetic field as just meaning the interaction of a magnet with something else. So if a magnet pulls on something or pushes on something, that's because of its magnetic field. OK, are we good with that? OK. So if we have, say, two magnets, and two, or one magnet and two compass needles. Compass needles are magnetic. They're like little magnets, right? And we put another magnet in the system, right? Those two magnets now are attracted to this south pole and to that south pole, right? So what's going to happen is that they are going to tilt. 
So now this one is closer to that south pole, so it's going to tilt more. And this one is closer to this one, so it's going to tilt a little bit less. Right? It's going to more, mostly align with this magnet. And that's going to be really important. Now what happens if we take that second magnet away? If we take that second magnet away, the two compass needles are going to go back to where they were, but in doing so, they're going to oscillate a little bit. They're going to shake. Right? So they'll go from like this to like this, and they'll shake a little while. And what's cool is that if a magnet shakes inside of another magnet's magnetic field, right, they can generate what's called electromagnetic radiation. Who's heard the word electromagnetic radiation before? Few of you. It's a big word, right? Do you know what it means? Anybody? No. It means light. Electromagnetic radiation means light. So this is the electromagnetic spectrum, OK? So what we call visible light is right here. So light is a wave, OK? And as a wave, it has a frequency. Frequency just means how fast it moves, right? How fast it goes up and down. So if it goes up and down really, really fast, that means it has a lot of energy, right? Think about if you're doing jump rope. If you want the jump rope to go around really quickly, you have to spin it with a lot of energy, right? If it goes up and down slower, then it has less energy, OK? Everything from x-rays and microwaves and light that you see and radio waves are all types of light, just with different energies. So radio waves and the light in this room are the exact same thing, OK? So that's important to know. You can generate these radio waves while the uh, compass needle is oscillating. And we can then collect those radio waves and analyze them. And what's really cool is that you can actually then listen to them. So this is the signal. This is what it sounds like when a certain type of magnet is oscillating back and forth in a magnetic field. You hear that? Now, that comes from a particular type of molecule. And I'll tell you what molecules are in a second. Basically, a particular type of thing. A different type of thing will make this other noise. You hear that? That ringing? Yes. Yes. OK, good. I'm glad you hear it. OK, so we can use that signal as part of our, our MRI to generate our image. Now. If we just have one magnet go in and then go out, the signal is pretty weak. It's too weak for us to detect. So instead, we need to make it stronger somehow. And to do that, we can think of pushing a swing. If you have a friend on a swing, OK, and you give them one push, are they going to go very high? No. But what if you give them one push, and then wait till they come back, and then another push, and then another push, and you keep doing that? Then will they go really high? Yeah. Yeah, so yes. we yes. So we can do the exact same thing with this magnetic signal, okay? Instead of just putting that that um, second magnet in once and taking it away, we can put it in once and then again and then again and then again and make that signal bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. What I want you to do is I want you to take first of all, take your compass and take your magnet and try bringing your magnet closer to and farther away from your compass. On, so set your compass on the table and set the magnet on the table and just move the magnet closer and farther to the compass and see what happens to the needle. All right, so what I want you to do now is I want you to try bringing it in and out and in and out and see if you can get that needle to spin. See if you can get that needle to spin. So how many of you were able to get it to spin? A few of you. OK, it's a little bit difficult with an actual compass, but I wanted to show you. So here, this is a computer simulation of a compass and a magnet, all right? So with no magnetic field, with no magnet, the compass can orient however it wants. But then we can bring a magnet in, OK? And so now you see that the north aligns with the south, and the south aligns with the north, right? Well, now we'll bring in our second magnet. And you can see that this is tilted now, right? We, the compass is tilted towards that second magnet. If we let it go, 
See, it tips back and forth a little bit, right? Well, now let's try making that magnet strong and changing the frequency that we move it in and out. You can see that that magnet needle is going to rock back and forth if we get the right frequency. See how the oscillation, the rocking has become bigger? It's moving more. That's that increase in signal that I was talking about. Right? Okay, so let's look again at our slide. So again, so that's like pushing your friend on a swing, right? Well, what can we see using this technique? Well, we can see a cup here. Yes, we can see a cup. Now, what I'm about to, to, I'm about to tell you why this is the case, but for now, I'm going to ask all of you to believe me when I say that water has little tiny magnets in it. So first of all, have you guys all heard of a molecule? Yes. yes. Excellent. Okay, so water is a molecule, right? And each water molecule has little tiny magnets in it. And we'll talk about why that is in a second. Okay? But so if we have this, this glass of water, right, we can put it in a magnetic field so that there's a strong magnet at the top and a weak magnet at the bottom. And now the frequency that those oscillations happen, the frequency of the sound of the radio waves that are produced is going to depend on the strength of the magnetic field. So we're going to get a different frequency up here or a different pitch or different tone than we will get down here. Okay? The amount of signal depends on how much of those magnets, how much water we have. So what we can do is we can make a graph like this where we have signal up here and frequency down there. And you can see that where the magnet is strong, you have high frequency, okay? And you have a lot of signal because you have a lot of water up here. Where the magnet is weak, you have low frequency. And you only have a little bit of signal because you have less water in this part of the cup, okay? So this gives us sort of this one-dimensional image. But if we take this magnetic field and sweep it around the cup, then you can end up building up a three-dimensional picture. And that's how we get these images. So that's all well and good, but how does it tell us about us? Well, what are you made of? You are made of molecules, you're made of proteins, of DNA, of sugars, and of water. You're over 70% water, right? Water is this molecule, it looks like this. It has one atom of oxygen and two atoms of hydrogen. And like I said, it contains these little magnets because atoms can act like magnets, especially hydrogen atoms, okay? So an atom looks like this. You have a small, tiny, positively charged thing called a nucleus, which is really small, and then you have something that's a little bit bigger around it, which is negatively charged, okay? These atoms can spin, and when they spin, they generate a magnetic field. So they turn into an, a, a magnet when they spin. And we can use, oh, if they spin in one direction, their magnetic field points up. And if they spin in the other direction, their magnetic field points down. And we can use that. And by putting them into an electric field, we can change the direction of their spin. So if with, with no field, they might be spinning so that their magnets point like this or like this. But if we put them in a magnetic field, their spins are going to align so that their, magnet, so that their magnets align with the new magnetic field just like our compass needle, okay? So what can we see inside of us? Well, each one of your organs, your heart, your bones, your liver, your muscles has a different amount of water in it, right? And that different amount of water will give you a different amount of signal when you're looking at the MRI. So remember how we have a different amount of signal in different frequencies? Just like we did with the glass of water, we can take this magnetic field sweep it around your body and get a three-dimensional image of where in your body the water is. And where the water is more concentrated, where there's more water, you know that it's one type of organ. Where there's less water, you know it's another type of organ. And that's how you can see and distinguish something like your skeleton from your heart or your lungs or your liver or your brain. So this is what an MRI machine looks like. So you lie down on a table, they put you inside, and the magnets are all in this big, round container, right? 
And that's where the magnets sweep around you. So how many of you guys have heard what it sounds like to be in an MRI? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it makes a big, loud noise, right? And there's lots of banging and whirring. The banging is when the magnets are moving around, right? And so that's how you know it is actually working. So this, again, is what it ends up looking like when all is said and done. And that's that. Do you guys have any questions?